When we observe ourselves, we are often confronted in the first place with our own face. However, seeking to truly know ourselves can expose us to aspects of ourselves that we hide behind a usual facade. Unlike a flattering mirror, this honest reflection of ourselves highlights everything that lies behind our persona, the social mask we put on to interact with the world. The term persona, originating from the theatrical mask, symbolizes the social roles we adopt in different situations. According to Carl Jung's theory, the persona stands between our ego, our conscious core identity, and society. This adaptation allows us to conform to social expectations, but can also create a gap between our true nature and the image we project. This duality between our inner identity and our social mask can cause internal conflicts and distance us from our authenticity. So, while these masks are useful for navigating society, it is crucial to maintain a connection with our true identity behind the mask to preserve our personal integrity. The persona represents a complex system of relationships between our individual consciousness and society. It is essentially a social mask designed to influence others' perception while concealing our true nature. Jung discusses two phases of the persona. The first stage is identification, where we consciously adopt this mask, knowing that our social appearance does not exactly correspond to our real essence. This is generally safe, as long as we remain aware of this distinction. However, it can become problematic if we identify too much with this shaped image or lose awareness of it. In such cases, the second stage, disintegration, occurs, where the persona intentionally or unintentionally breaks, causing inner chaos and a sense of disorientation. In rare situations, an individual may develop two or more distinct personalities, each with its own opinions and behaviors. This is known as dissociative identity disorder, often resulting from trauma. During the persona's disintegration process, several approaches can be adopted. Negative restoration, where the individual tries to return to a previous state to conform to an established norm. Absence, where the person lives in seclusion, making it difficult or impossible to interact with the outside world. Finally, restoration, where the individual consciously rebuilds their persona in a way that does not hide their true self. Hiding our true self carries risks. The persona can mask our vulnerabilities and aspects of ourselves that we prefer to conceal. Sometimes we excessively identify with this shaped image, acting as someone we are not truly. There is always a certain degree of falseness in the persona as it acts as a showcase where we present our best aspects. This social mask begins to form in childhood as we seek to conform to the expectations of our parents, fathers and teachers, responding to the wishes and standards imposed by our social environment. Children learn to distinguish acceptable and unacceptable behaviors based on the rewards or punishments they receive. In response to these learnings, they tend to develop traits considered acceptable in their persona while hiding or repressing those deemed unacceptable. For example, assertiveness may be perceived as impolite, leading to passivity that impacts interpersonal relationships. Similarly, a tendency to avoid conflicts can result in excessive conciliation, advantageous in some situations, but creating imbalances in personal life. These repressed aspects eventually form what Jung calls our shadow, a dark part of our personality. This shadow can suddenly emerge in emotional outbursts. According to Jung, managing this shadow is an integral part of our education throughout life. It is a process that allows us to recognize and integrate the repressed aspects of our personality, helping us be honest about our deep nature. Negotiating with our shadow is essential to preserve the positive qualities of our psyche while acknowledging the darker sides of our nature. The shadow is not solely perceived as negative. It also has positive aspects. However, it can become hostile if ignored or misunderstood. Another dangerous facet of the persona is excessive identification with this social facade. If our ego becomes entirely identical to our persona, it can suppress our individuality. In this case, our adaptation to society is maximal, but our psychological development suffers because our individuality is stifled. 
children learn to distinguish acceptable and unacceptable behaviors based on the rewards or punishments they receive. In response to these learnings, they tend to develop traits considered acceptable in their persona while hiding or repressing those deemed unacceptable. For example, assertiveness may be perceived as impolite, leading to passivity that impacts interpersonal relationships. Similarly, a tendency to avoid conflicts can result in excessive conciliation, advantageous in some situations, but creating imbalances in personal life. These repressed aspects eventually form what Jung calls our shadow, a dark part of our personality. This shadow can suddenly emerge in emotional outbursts. According to Jung, managing this shadow is an integral part of our education throughout life. It is a process that allows us to recognize and integrate the repressed aspects of our personality, helping us be honest about our deep nature. Negotiating with our shadow is essential to preserve the positive qualities of our psyche while acknowledging the darker sides of our nature. The shadow is not solely perceived as negative, it also has positive aspects. However, it can become hostile if ignored or misunderstood. Another dangerous facet of the persona is excessive identification with this social facade. If our ego becomes entirely identical to our persona, it can suppress our individuality. In this case, our adaptation to society is maximal, but our psychological development suffers because our individuality is stifled. Jung writes that every vocation or profession has its own characteristic persona imposed by the world, and professionals strive to meet these expectations. The danger is that they become identical to their persona. For instance, the teacher with their manual or the singer with their voice. The harm is done as they exclusively live on the background of their own biography. One could say, with a bit of exaggeration, that the persona is what one is not in reality, but what oneself and others think one is. For Jung, individuation involves not only freeing oneself from the illusions of the persona, but also understanding and integrating these primal images in a balanced way. This would allow the individual to break free from unconscious influences and achieve a deeper self-awareness, surpassing pre-established patterns and enabling authentic personal development. Jung writes, It is only because the persona represents a more or less arbitrary and fortuitous segment of the collective psyche that we can make the mistake of considering it entirely individual. It is, as its name implies, only a mask of the collective psyche, a mask that feigns individuality, making others and oneself believe that one is individual when such is not really the case. When analyzing the persona, we remove the mask and discover that what seemed individual is fundamentally collective. In other words, the persona is just a mask for the collective unconscious. We all seek a name, aim for a title, a function, and to be this or that. Fundamentally, the persona is nothing more than a compromise between the individual and society about how a person should appear, which should not be devalued. However, the development of individuality cannot occur solely through personal relationships as it requires a psychic relationship with the collective unconscious. Real individuality continues to manifest and interfere with conscious thought, while the unconscious guides us toward individuation. Through the exploration of the unconscious, we can assimilate the archetypes influencing our conscious life as an autonomous personality. In the collective unconscious, these archetypes come to life through individuals' unique expressions and their culture worldwide. The human psyche is both individual and collective, and the balance and cooperation between seemingly contradictory sides are precisely what gives us psychic equilibrium.